Hello, my name is Dr. Heather Renfro and I'm a third year emergency medicine resident at the University of Chicago. I'm also a board director of AAEM RSA, also known as the American Academy of Emergency Medicine Resident and Student Association. Today, I'm going to be giving a lecture as a part of the JEDI AAM MS4 lecture series, where I'll be discussing finding a mentor and a sponsor. So let's get into it. Before I get started, I wanna tell you a little bit about myself and why I love emergency medicine. So I'm from Houston, Texas, born and raised. I went to DeBakey High School for Health Professions in Houston. I then went on to Loyola University, New Orleans, where I majored in chemistry. I took a year off in between undergrad and medical school. And during that year, I was a lot of things. I was a bartender and I also taught at my high school where I taught history through film and sociology. I then obtained my medical degree from UT Southwestern. And now I'm emergency medicine resident at the University of Chicago. So how I got into emergency medicine and why I love it. I came into medical school thinking I wanted to be a plastic surgeon. I'll talk about that a little later. But as I began to explore all of the wonderful aspects of medicine, I realized that my heart was with emergency medicine. Emergency medicine is the best specialty in my mind. It allows you to see all types of pathologies, to take care of all types of people. But most importantly, you can take care of people when they are the sickest, when they feel like they have the least amount of hope and that they really need someone in their corner, that's when we come in. And what I love the most about emergency medicine is that we turn no one down. We are truly the warriors of the community. We are the advocates of the community. And it's so exciting. You never know what's gonna walk through the door. You never know what you're gonna get. It's never boring. So I love emergency medicine and I love what we do and the patients that we take care of. So the purpose of this lecture, by the end of this lecture, participants will be able to describe the importance of mentorship and sponsorship. By the end of this lecture, participants will utilize the provided resources to obtain mentors and sponsors. And by the end of the lecture, participants will be able to implement the three A's into their mentorship relationship. So my journey into emergency medicine, I have here three mentors that I want to share with you. So as I mentioned, I went to DeBakey High School for Health Professions in Houston, and the purpose of DeBakey is to really expose you to the healthcare field very early on. So as a part of our junior and senior year, we actually go to Memorial Hermann and um, Ben Taub and we shadow residents and attendings. Well, when I was in my junior year of high school, I got to shadow here on the left, Dr. Aisha McKnight Barron. This is actually me when I was a little bit older, but in high school, I got to shadow her. And at that time she was a plastic surgery resident. She was actually the very first black female physician I had ever seen in real life. And I was in awe. I was like, oh my gosh, I want to be you when I grow up. And over the years, I kept in contact with Dr. Barron. She was a point of contact for me as I was going along my pre-med journey. And once I decided to go to medical school and take the MCAT, she allowed me here in these two pictures to shadow her in the OR in Atlanta and see her in real time doing surgery. And so I came into medical school wanting to do plastic surgery because I wanted to be just like her. That's the truth. Um, but along the way, I did meet another mentor here in the middle, Dr. Tammy Singleton, while I was still in my pre-med journey. So at Loyola in New Orleans, I decided to become a scribe because as most of you know, when you're working to get into medical school, you have to have a lot of things on your CV that shows your exposure. And I was fortunate enough to actually be a personal scribe for Dr. Singleton. So I was literally her scribe. And as her scribe, she directly exposed me to pediatric hematology, specifically the sickle cell community and the impact that she made in the community. Dr. Singleton is a phenomenal physician traveling the world, teaching people about sickle cell hematology and how it relates and affects the Black community. She also inspired me, encouraged me, let me know you too can be a doctor. Our relationship became so close. I was actually her, almost like her personal assistant when I was in college. Um, I helped pick up the kids from school. We became really close. And honestly, she's like another big sister to me. She actually wrote my letter of recommendation to get into medical school. And we still keep in contact very closely today. 
And then on the far right, I have Dr. Danielle Rucker here. She is also an emergency medicine physician, and I met her at UT Southwestern. I was a first-year medical student, and she was a second-year medical student, and she truly helped me every single step of the way, so much that she actually is the re one of the big reasons that I am now an emergency medicine physician. I had gone through every clerkship seen it all. And in the very beginning of each one, I was so excited and I loved what I was seeing. But then by the end, I was like, oh, I don't really like this too much. And when I talked to Danielle, she said, well, you know, I feel like you like the excitement. You like the acuity. Maybe you should consider emergency medicine. So I did an emergency medicine rotation in my third year of medical school and I fell in love with the specialty. And I'm so excited about my decision. And actually, I am going into emergency medical services for a fellowship where I'll be learning to be a medical director of a pre-hospital system. And what that means is that I will be directing ambulances, firefighters, helicopters, and policies and procedures as it relates to the care that happens outside the hospital. So I'm very glad to be here today to help you um, find a mentor and talk to you about why it's important to have mentors and sponsors. So let's get into it. Why is it important to have a mentor? I would say first things first is simply just getting started. I don't know about you, but I didn't have anyone in my family who was a physician or even close to a physician. You know, we definitely had a nurse in my family, but the process to nursing and to becoming a physician is very different. And when you don't know anyone who has done what you are trying to do, it can be difficult to even get started. And so having a mentor like Dr. Barron here on the left, that allowed me to take the first steps to becoming a physician. So they help you simply on a very basic term, just get started. And with anything in life that's worth having, you're gonna have obstacles. And who better to talk to about how to overcome these challenges than people who've probably had those same challenges. You know, mentors, the excellent part about them is most people didn't have a straight path. And even if they did, they know people who didn't. So as you run across these obstacles as, and these challenges, it's always good to have someone in your corner who can give you advice to get through it. So the advice piece, you know, what, what makes your application look good? What makes you a strong candidate? What can you do to help you stand out from the others? These are questions that you could ask anyone, but who better to ask than someone who not only has been through it, but who maybe even are sitting on these committees that help select students to do, you know, to get a scholarship, to do residency, fellowship. There's so many things where you can need a mentor and they can give you that advice to get you there. Lastly, but definitely not least, what I would say would be connections. You know, the beauty of having someone in that role that you see yourself getting to is that they know other people that can help you get to a goal as well. So let's say, for example, you know, both Dr. Barron and Dr. Singleton are in completely different specialties than I am now, but they know people in multiple fields and multiple cities and multiple programs. And so as I went along the way, you know, they were saying, oh, make sure you reach out to this person or I know someone who's interested in what you're interested in. And having those connections can make what seems like a big task much smaller. There are different types of mentors. I like to think of them as the short range mentor and the long range mentor. When you interview, they talk about what's your one year plan, your five year plan, your 10 year plan. Well, when you think about it, each step of the way, you might need a different type of mentor. For example, your short range mentor is someone who's typically younger in age, closer to where you are in your training or where you are and what you're trying to get to. And so as a result, they have more narrowed and specific advice. So for example, here on the right, Dr. Rucker, as I mentioned, she was a year ahead of me in medical school. So when I was going through anatomy and physiology and cardiology and organisms and hosts, and I was like, man, I have a hard time grasping this concept. How did you do it? Because she had just done it the year before, she was immediately able to say, hey, these are the resources I use that work. I tried this method first time. It didn't work, but now this did. And so they're able to give you very specific and narrow advice. So sometimes when we think of mentors or this big concept, it don't have to be that. It can be as simple as you're a year ahead of me. You're doing what I want to do. You're succeeding and I want to succeed like you. Can you help me? And sometimes that's enough for those short-term men mentors. The long-range mentor is someone who is a little further along than you are, 
who is at the end of the tunnel that you're trying to reach or who has done the thing that you're trying to do. So what comes with that, like Dr. Barron here and Dr. Singleton, is years of experience, right? They've been there. They've done that. And even if they haven't, they have colleagues or connections with people who have done the things that you're trying to do. So as you say, hey, you know, I know you are a hematologist, but I want to go into emergency medicine. Do you know anyone in Chicago? Because that's where I see myself going. You have these connections now that you didn't have before because you have someone who's further along, who's made connections over the years that just have the connections that you wouldn't have otherwise. They also have wisdom. And I think this is a really big piece. You know, as you start to apply to medical school or apply to residency or apply to fellowship, there are little tips and tricks of the trade that you can pick up from just interviewing multiple candidates as an attending or reading a ton of personal statements or reading a ton of letters of interest for a scholarship where they can say, hey, I've been on the board enough times to know that this is what they're looking for. Well, that's wisdom. That's something you can't get from Googling. That's not something that you can get just from someone who did it last year. This is from someone who's seen something over and over again. And lastly, they can typically help you really well with career goals, especially if they're doing what it is that you want to do. So how do you find a mentor now? The first thing I would say is get involved in AAEM RSA, the American Academy of Emergency Medicine and Resident Students Association. We love AEM RSA because in my opinion, it's the best organization out there. We actively work to advocate for residents and students to educate residents and students and to innovate and to make impact, right? To truly impact your experience as a student, as a resident. What that means for you is you have access as a student to residents who are sitting where you wanna be, who are in a city that you wanna go to, who are in a program of your dream, who can get you connections with volunteer opportunities, shadow opportunities, away rotations. It's so important to get involved. And the more you're involved, the more conferences you go to, which that's the big piece, these national conferences, that's the more connections you can make. And at these conferences, because these physicians are so excited to meet you, they want to be your mentor. They want to help. They want to give back. So the biggest thing I would say is to get involved in AEMRSA. Uh, the next thing I would say is Shadow physicians that look like you. This is really important. Representation matters. You know, when I think about the first thing that sealed the deal for me when I realized that, I, okay, I want to be a physician was when I met, again, Dr. Barron. I knew I wanted to be a doctor. I, seen, I had seen physicians on TV and I was like, that's cool. I'm good in science. I like it. We're working with cutting up um, an animal in lab, and I think it's cool. I think anatomy is cool, but I hadn't seen anyone doing it. There was no one that I knew that was doing what I wanted to do. So it seemed like as far as trying to become Beyonce, right? <laughs> but when you shadow a physician who looks like you, who has been where you've been, it gives you hope. It gives you a sense of, they can do it. I can do it. And so I would say definitely, definitely start reaching out to physicians that look like you so that you can have that exposure. And lastly, I would say, join medical student forums so that you can actually identify mentors. These medical student forums, such as um, SNMA, the Student National Medical Association, allows you to connect with other students who are in your position to say, hey, this conference we're going to is gonna give us access to this group of people, or we're gonna work on this project and by doing this publication and presentation, now we have things on our CV that gives us even more exposure to other mentors. So I would say join these forums, super important. Other things I've listed here, SAM, Society of Academic Emergency Medicine is another excellent organization that you can join. EMRA is another one through ASEP, and these I will have links at the end where you can click through these and kind of get familiar with the different organizations. And then this little last one on the right is GroupMe. And I put that because GroupMe, Facebook, a lot of these social networking pieces, LinkedIn, allow you to meet other med students, residents, fellows, and attendings who want to help you, specifically 
underrepresented minorities in medicine. They want to help you. They want to be your mentor. And so all you have to do is join these forums, get in the group chat, get on what we call YBAD Facebook, um, and just start to meet these people. Put your face out there. Start to go to some of these events that they list. There's always things going on. So there's a lot that you can do. So now let's talk about once you found a mentor. You went to the AAM RSA website, you joined our organization, you're now a member, you went to the national conference, you found a mentor, and now you're like, now what? Well, these are the three A's of mentorship that I wanna touch on. The first thing would be active listening. And what does that mean exactly? Active listening is if I am telling, I'm asking a mentor, hey, this is what I'm trying to do and I need help. You have to be willing to listen because you don't know the answers. <laughs> and that is something that, you know, it, I say it jokingly, but also say it very seriously because these people have the wisdom and the knowledge that we talked about that can really get you to where you need to go. So by one, not just sitting and listening, but listening to obtain knowledge and respond and really understand is what we think about with active listening. So I ask you a question, you give me an answer. And then from that, now I have another question because I'm engaged. I'm not just a fly on the wall and say, hey, you're my mentor. Can you help me? No, I'm engaging you because you have something that I need. And by engaging in a conversation and actively listening, I'm able to really form a good relationship. Be available. You know, it's one thing to say, hey, I need a mentor, but it's another to every time y'all are trying to meet, you're like, hey, I got to reschedule because I have a test coming up or, hey, sorry, you know, I'm going to Miami this weekend. If you are serious about you, what you want to do, be available. And something that I would suggest, you know, as you think about your mentors, they're physicians typically, and they're busy and they have their own lives. So when I, my advice to you would be when you reach out to these mentors, Say, hey, these are the dates and times that I can meet. Do any of these work for you? And that way you're not just like, hey, I want to meet. And they're like, hey, okay, cool. Give them dates and times that you're available. Let them pick a couple dates and then and make a decision and stick with it. Because it's nothing worse than saying you need help and then you're constantly rescheduling. So be available and recognize that these moments, these 30 minutes to an hour conversations can really be life-changing for you. And next I would say analyze. So see what's working and what's not working in your mentorship relationship. So let's say you found a mentor, things were going well, y'all get along well, but we're not making any progress or we haven't been able to meet. What can I do to change this relationship so that I'm getting the most out of it? Remember, you are the person who's gonna be gaining the most. So it is the onus is on you to make sure that you're getting to that goal. So if something isn't working, then maybe make some adjustments, realize and do some self-reflecting and say, how can we make this relationship better? And sometimes that means getting a new mentor. But I put some pictures, pictures here for you because I wanna show you that, you know, mentorship comes in a lot of different ways. You know, it can be here, we're getting coffee, we're chilling, we're talking. I'm just a voice listening for you versus here, I'm actively, actively working to get it done. You know, it can be as simple as someone who's a year older than you and you just want to bounce ideas off of them to someone who's doing everything you ever wanted to in life and you need to reach out to them. Not only is it important to think about who you should reach out to, but what does that person look like? And this is really key. I have another mentor from college that I didn't list on here. Um, but Dr. Copelitz was one of my science, science teachers in college, and she's also one of my mentors. She also wrote, wrote one of my letters of recommendation for medical school. And I want to bring her up because she is one of my only mentors who is not a Black woman, but she was just as impactful. And I think there's pros and cons to both. And it's important to have both mentors that look like you and mentors that don't. Let me tell you why. So from a I am a black woman standpoint, and I want to talk to another black woman about how to get to where I need to go, especially if she's been there. That's super important because maybe that mentor has experienced challenges or things that did work or didn't work that they want to share with you that helps make your process a lot easier. And that's just simply because they look like you. But also on the other end of the spectrum, 
it is important to have a mentor who doesn't look like you because they also bring forth very good information that can be useful. They also might have a lot more experience with helping other students get to the goal. And so their wisdom and knowledge in that realm could actually be more in depth. I think it's important to have both. I think you don't ever want to narrow mind yourself so much that you have one mentor and they're like, do this like this, do this like that. And you are trusting them with everything that you have and you're not seeing the results that you want. Versus let's say you have three or four mentors. Everyone's on the same page, excellent. But maybe three out of four are and one isn't. And it's like, hmm, well, maybe I'm gonna listen to these three on that part, but listen to that one on that part. And that's okay too. I think it's so important to get multiple opinions and to not be so narrow-minded, but to make sure that you are giving yourself the best chance possible for whatever it is. And that allows you to never miss things. So I appreciated having different mentors. They all read my personal statements and they all had different opinions on it. And I had to make a decision on what was most important for me. But I thought it was very useful to talk to people from different backgrounds. Dr. Kopitz is in a physician. She is a PhD in chemistry. So her outlook on medicine is different than a Dr. Singleton, for example. However, she was a pre-med advisor for many years. So her experience with getting students successfully into medical school was very high versus Dr. Singleton. Her experience was herself, but her experience herself was very useful for me because she as a black woman many years before I had experienced what I was experiencing still during that time in 2015. So it's super important to have both types of mentors. Those are race congruent, ethnicity congruent, and ethnicity non-congruent, as well as gender. You know, I didn't have any male mentors, but I do think there's something to be said about having both women and male mentors as you deem necessary. So keep all that in mind as you are picking your mentors. So now you have your mentor, y'all are talking, y'all are hanging out. What is the best part that you can take away from this mentorship and how can you make that happen? Start out by setting goals and expectations. Again, your mentor, nine times out of 10, is super busy, has their own career, their own life, their own family. It is much more fruitful of a mentorship relationship if the mentee says, hey, this is what I need. These are my goals. This is what I expect from you as my mentor. And that could be as simple as I want to talk to you every six months, or I want to check in once a month, or I want you to just read my personal statement if that's okay. Or I'd like for you to put in a good word for me after you see my work ethic as your scribe. Whatever it is, vocalize that. Because most mentors, while we want to be there for you, and we want to help you in every way possible. If you don't tell me what you need, I can't help you. So be very clear on your goals and expectation. The next thing, which is the most important thing in any relationship is communication. Communication is key. Make sure you're responding to the text messages. Make sure you're responding to the emails. Make sure, you know, let's say you miss a call, but you're calling back within a timely manner. If you're not actively communicating as it's necessary, I'm not saying you need to talk to the mentors every day, all day, but when the time is there that you need to communicate, you need to get things done, don't be the mentee who takes a week to respond to an email, but then is asking for a letter of recommendation in the next two days. Not gonna work. Effective communication is the answer to all things. So just be very available, be good about your communication, check those emails regularly, because just as much as this more mentor can help you, if they feel like you don't care or you don't communicate or you have a lot of excuses, that can also hurt you, right? Like we're talking about people who have connections. So keep that in mind as you're forming these relationships. And then determine how frequently, like I kind of mentioned earlier, how frequently you want to meet with your mentor. You know, this might be on a quarterly basis, an annual basis. It might be every couple of weeks, depending on if it's application season, whatever that is, lay it down, ask them, is this something that you are capable of doing or willing to do? And if they say yes, excellent. If not, then maybe you need a different mentor who's more available. This slide here is talking about the difference between a mentor and a sponsor. And I think this is really key here. A quote that I heard was that a coach tells you what to do. A mentor will listen to you and advise you 
but a sponsor is actually going to tell people about you. This is very important because mentors can say, this is what I would do. This is what I've done. This is what I would suggest. This is what such and such is saying. Oh, I hear you. I'm sorry you're going through that. Man, how can I help you through that? What do you need for me to get you through that, right? Sponsors, though, when you think about sponsors, sponsors are the people who actually get you to the goal. So the mentors can help you get to the goal through their advice and through their connections and their wisdom. But the sponsors are the person that puts the stamp on the scholarship or who makes that call that puts the stamp on the scholarship. So I like this chart here. Mentors can be at any level. Mentors can provide career guidance, such as explaining unwritten rules, such as don't come to that interview with a baggy, with a baggy suit. Don't come to that interview with your hair not combed. <laughs> you know, the things that we know we shouldn't do, or maybe we don't know. And these are the unwritten rules like they can give you that advice. Mentors are important at all stages of your career, but really early on, because if you don't have someone who helps you get started, how are you ever going to get to the goal if you don't even know where to start? If you're supposed to start on 14th Street in Michigan and you're all the way over there on the South side, you're never going to get to where you need to go. So they are really crucial in the beginning, but they're crucial at all parts of your journey. Mentors can be located anywhere in the world, right? As I mentioned, Dr. Barron is in Atlanta. Dr. Singleton is in New Orleans. Dr. Rucker is in Fort Worth, Dallas, right? Texas. So your mentors don't have to be right here. They can be anywhere. And most importantly, they're going to help you with that career development, helping you get to the emergency medicine physician. Now, a sponsor, sponsor is someone who would be at least a faculty with influence, right? So not the second year med student, but the dean, or not just someone who's an orthopedic surgeon in your emergency medicine, but someone who's a fellowship director, someone who is the scholarship guarantor, I believe. <laughs> um, they are the person who has what you need. The sponsors promote their prodigy, you, in conversation with senior leaders and recommend you for specific career opportunities or promotions. So they actually have the pool. They are the button. They are the go. These people are actually the most critical in when you transition at the end of, not necessarily the end of the career because your career never ends, but when you are having a pivotal moment, when you're saying, I need this new job, I need this scholarship. I need that fellowship position, that residency position. When things are starting to change and you need someone higher up who can put in a good word for you or get you to where you need to go, that's where the sponsors come in. And the sponsors typically should be at your home organization or within those national organizations that we talked about who have the connections to exactly where you wanna go. Why are these sponsors important? Because they help with career advancement, not becoming the doctor, the doctor who has a job, the doctor who has the role as the new program director, the doctor who has the role as the dean of the medical school, right? Those are the people who get you to the next step. So it's very important to recognize the difference and they're both extremely important to have. And I love this slide because most of us who are here today, especially people who look like me, I got here because we had a mentor. We got here because someone at some point along the way said, you got this, you can do this. Let me help you figure out how you can do this. Or, hey, I know someone who just did this. Do you want my help? And I say this because once you make it, you have to pay it forward. You have to pass the torch. It is The onus is on us, especially for people that look like us, to give it back. Because again, the future of medicine lies in our hand. And the more that we wanna change medicine to reflect this beautiful country that is so diverse and rich and to have more and more physicians that look like we do, we have to give it back once we've made it to where we are going. So in summary, mentorship is vital as you navigate your career. In order to do so, you have to start getting involved in these national organizations such as AAM, RSA, and the others that I listed, and I'll list for you again at the end. 
When you get these mentors, it is so important to set those goals, set those expectations, communicate clearly, and be, be on time, be respectful of your mentors, and have a strong, beautiful relationship. Because this is not just, I need you, can you help me? These are long-term relationships. Like I mentioned again, with Dr. Singleton, I was helping take care of her kids. It was excellent. It was fun. Like these connections are something that you can cherish forever. So really take these, these relationships and connections seriously so that once you get to where you're going, you can look back and give it again and pass that torch forward. And finally, sponsorship is crucial to success. Yes, your CV might speak for itself. Yes, you can probably get to where you need to go by your hard work. But why not sweeten the pot some by having a sponsor who can speak on your behalf and put you in that position, who can say, this is the person for the job. This is who I want as my fellow. This is someone who I know if they use this scholarship, they're going to say what they, they're going to do what they said they would. So it is super important to build these relationships, form these relationships with mentors and sponsors. And once you do, give it back. I have some resources here for you with the different organizations that I mentioned before. Please, please go check them out, specifically AMRSA. Join us, we're the best. <laughs> and But honestly, most of us emergency physicians are members of all of these organizations, AAMRSA, SAEM, ASAP, EMRA. Once you're no longer a medical student, you become a member of NMA and YPS Young Physicians and ASAP. We're literally members of all of them. So it's important because again, the more you're a member of, the more connections you have. I also just put in a plug here on how you can get involved in JEDI AMRSA, where we specifically focus on justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. So please follow these steps to get involved and to get mentors like myself. And I also put some resources here for you just about learning about mentorship, how to really succeed at the art of mentorship and sponsorship. Again, these are some steps on how to find a mentor. So check this out. And I hope to see some of you at the National Organization, the Scientific Assembly for AMRSA, and I would love to be your mentor. Again, I am Heather Renfro, one of the emergency medicine residents at University of Chicago, soon to be EMS fellow at UT Houston McGovern, and I hope to meet some of you all.